Welcome to another episode of Men of the House. So, today we're going to talk about a couple of different things. It's the first day of school, so we'll talk about kids. And it's also my wife and late grandmother's birthday. They actually had the same birthday before she passed away. Um, so, definitely a day to remember. Also, I believe it's Elvis's death date. So... Kind of a full circle of birth and ending, which is kind of what I would see when I worked in the emergency room for six years. Um, you see the circle of life. You see everything from people being born to people leaving. But in terms of kids and wife, um, we've been together 17 years. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is my wife's ex-husband. Not in detail, just kind of in general. So he is actually one of the few people that um, I actually enjoy going to the Waffle House with. Um, we're a couple years apart by age. Our birthdays are a day apart which is also preceded by Father's Day. Um, we've pretty much been friendly, I would say almost the whole time my wife and I have been together. I think initially there was probably a little hesitation, but, you know, I think that's just kind of normal when two people split up, so... Um, but kind of my take on things was, hey, you know, they have kids together. Um, he's always going to be a part of their life. And as long as I'm with this woman, then, um, he's going to be a part of my life too. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people I think would find it strange how, how well we get along and the dynamic of our relationship um, as men and then also as a family. But, you know, it kind of is what it is. Um, I think for the past 17 years, it's never been our intentions to let the world or what the world thinks dictate what our situation is or how we feel about the situation, or what it means to be in the situation. Um, <clears throat> you know, you kind of have to coexist as parents. I don't think it does the kids any good if the parents are always fighting. Um, if there's always, you know, shit talking or whatever going on behind the kids' backs, or one parent, you know, kind of degrading the other um just doesn't work you know nowadays it takes a tribe you know you can even see it in um sure there's rich people who have nannies and whatnot and i guess they spend time with their kids take care of their kids somewhat but sometimes they're raised by the help the nanny Whoever's around, but regardless, you know, it does take a tribe, I think. Um, and kind of on that note, you know, his parents treat my daughter, treat me, um, as well as they treat him. You know, we're very friendly, always get along, um, so... It's not a bad thing. You know, kind of in this, you know, we've done family trips for like a quinceanera where we went to Disney and it was, you know, two families, siblings, spouses, um, brothers-in-laws, sisters-in-laws, um, it was just, you know, 
it was a big trip. So we, you know, we got along as well as probably 15 to 20 people could get along in something like that. I mean, heck, you know, when I was a manager, I had 26 direct reports and then 10 clinical providers and it's hard to get that many people on the same page and to do what you want to get done in a professional environment where people are getting paid. So to get that many personalities together and have a decent trip and be there for one person and coordinate dinners, rides, spending time together, you know, it wasn't bad. So, but also, you know, to put it into perspective, um, we were visiting New Year's Eve one time and the transmission went out on our vehicle and we had all the kids and, um, you know, needless to say, my wife's ex-husband was the first person there, the first person to show up and basically we called roadside assistance for a tow. He left my wife and the kids his vehicle so they could go and get out of the heat and he stayed with me, and we waited for the tow truck. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Which kind of brings me to a point, you know, it's like, um, I think especially males, how competitive we are. And then when it comes to things like this, maybe having dated or been with or married to the same woman, it's like, you got to swallow your pride because it's really about the kids. The kids are not these objects or things they're not possessions to be fought over i mean they're the ones who suffer when two adults choose to go that route you know life is difficult should be no surprise that people can be together 5 10 15 even 20 years and then one day decide that they don't get along or they want to call it quits it happens so, you know, our job as parents is to be there for the kids um, and try to raise good humans, good citizens, and make it work. And, you know, one of the other things was we never went by this kind of court-appointed document type of thing of, hey, it's going to be every other weekend, this, that, the other, um... It was always, if we wanted the kids for three weeks in the summer, whatever, we had the time, they had the time, that's what we did. There wasn't a lot of bickering over who, what, when, where, and why. Um, you know, which is pretty amazing. I mean, I understand that, you know, some people who take things to a different level as parents um, because they decide that they can't get along or maybe the father's not a good a not a good father maybe the mother's not a good mother and the court needs to step in and kind of make those decisions of whether it's you know supervised um, supervised visits whatever you want to call it or kind of depending on the situation, but, you know, I think two rational, three, four rational adults should be able to work this out and kind of just make it happen and kind of keep the kids at front and center of um, what they're thinking about and what they're considering and how they act and how they're going to do visits and how they're going to get along because um, the goal is the same in the end. Which, like I said before, is to, you know, just raise good humans, good citizens, whatever that case may be. And that's kind of one of the things I never understood was, um, you know, maybe if, like, let's say Kevin Costner and his wife, you know, that whole divorce has been in the news. So maybe it's one of those things if somebody has a lot of assets, then you know, lawyers get involved to divvy up that and the whole legality of 
who had what before, this and that, the other. And I can kind of see it, but at the same time, it's like, um, what's fair? You know, I mean, I think if I were a actor or something or had to be away all the time on the road or on sets, whatever, and my wife was consistently at home raising our child, and then we split, I think I would just figure out, you know, I would want them to be taken care of regardless if we were together or not. So, but also, you know, in a way, you're letting strangers decide what is best for you and your children, which I think is kind of weird. And then I also think at some point, you know, lawyering, that kind of thing is, it's a profession um, that's kind of based on debate, argument, and winning. So it's kind of like, I think at some point, does it become really less about the issue and more about the lawyer just wants to win. They don't care who they're screwing over. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's good lawyers out there and fair lawyers like in any profession, but um, I'm sure there's a handful that are rotten to the core and kind of have that mindset of, hey, it's all about winning. Um, and not maybe taking into consideration what's best. So, even though I'm sure they would naturally argue and beg to differ, because that's in their nature. That's what they went to school for. And even if they don't like it, they're probably stuck in it and too afraid to walk away and keep on doing it anyway. So I'm glad I'm not in that situation. On to my next topic. Um, since school started today, we did have to go school shopping. You know, as a guy, not a huge fan of going to different stores, malls, things of that nature. Maybe two different malls in a day. Um... But my daughter needed it. It was a chance for us as a family to spend time together. We were all off, so we commuted to a larger nearby metropolitan area, attended a few malls, um, you know, it ended up turning into my daughter's a little bit like me in that she does not like to shop that much or she has to be in the mood for it. Sometimes I think she likes to shop a little more if she's with my wife only. But when it's her, I, maybe my wife together, she's kind of a little more, um, hey, let's do things and have fun. So, and she doesn't like trotting all over two malls as neither do I. I mean, I enjoy getting a walk-in, but, you know, it's not the greatest thing to go into every store looking. So, we went to a couple of stores, ended up shopping at mostly one, grabbing a few things. And then, you know, wasn't long before she was hungry. She wanted to get some Shake Shack since we do not have that where we live. And she doesn't get it often when she visits her big sisters, um, even though they have one there. So we had some Shake Shack, and then by the end of the second mall, it was kind of turned into about almost four hours of ice skating, which was fun. So she mostly skated. I did not really want to, um, but eventually she convinced me, um, one, because I knew I wouldn't be able to do it well, and, you know, I was like, well, pay 20 bucks to possibly get hurt or turn that $20 into you know, a several thousand dollar visit to the emergency room, which I did not want to do. But we had fun nonetheless. Um, I got a little bit better by the end, but then I did have a little girl kind of come in front of me and stop all of a sudden and had to make some adjustments. And, 
nearly ate shit on the ice. But managed to keep myself up by holding on to the wall. But in so kind of did a few slippery slide air squat type things and kind of tweaked my knee a little bit. So, you know, but it wasn't too bad. Just a little um, knee pain to the outside. So wearing a brace. Kind of rehabbing that, keeping it elevated. Went for a short 30-minute walk today. Started hurting about 18 to 22 minutes in. But trying to keep some mobility, taking some NSAIDs. Um, slowly rehab it, try to be smart about it. But, um, you know, it definitely was interesting being in the mall. Um, just kind of doing some uh, people watching. It's interesting how fashion changes, um, you know, at 47, I wouldn't necessarily consider myself hip, um, but I feel like I dress appropriately and okay and kind of normal, like things match or go together. And I tell you what, man, some of the stuff I saw people wearing at the mall was absolutely crazy. You know, first of all, with socks and stocks, the old Birkenstocks, with tube socks, nonetheless. Also, socks and slides, you know, some good old gel Jordans match with tube socks. And, you know, paired with like way too tight kind of gym shorts and, you know, a shirt's a shirt for the most part, but, um, you know, Gym shorts so tight that a dude can put his wallet, phone, keys, and all that, and they don't even budge. They don't sag. They don't anything. I mean, my weight fluctuates a little bit, and, you know, I've lost some weight, maybe 13, 15 pounds, and I have some shorts that I can't even put my phone in before my underwear is shown, um, or I'm constantly pulling them up, so, you know, some meathead who goes to the gym wearing a trucker hat with tight ass shorts socks and stocks and gel jordans and interesting to say the least but hey no judgment here you do you i'll do me um but you know i guess i'm getting i'm that old person Probably when I was that age and would wear whatever I wore, there was probably more than likely people saying that about me. So, not hating here, just an observation. So, on the way back, I have a little broke dick moment in that. We're traveling and we get stuck in traffic for probably 45 minutes, maybe an hour on the straightaway of an interstate. And, you know, you're thinking, oh my gosh, there must be an accident. Something bad has happened. They're having everybody merge lanes, you know, that whole ordeal that kind of happens. And um, we finally... It finally opens up and everything starts going normal. And it was actually just construction on the other side of the highway. Not even our lanes, where it was cut down to one lane. So basically, we were stalled for almost an hour so people could look at construction on the other side of the highway. It's like, really? Are you kidding me? Move on. If it's not in your lane, if it doesn't concern you, move on. Quit bringing me, my family, into your drama. I mean, we had an hour and a half, two hour drive. We want to get home. I don't want to be sitting in traffic for an extra hour. And not only that, it kind of goes to this point of, it's like everybody wants to see a train wreck or a disaster. Um, you know, I spent six years in a level one trauma center. 
Um, I, I've seen it all, <clears throat> been part of it all. It's, it's a job and you kind of have to compartmentalize it so you can keep moving and do the job. But it definitely leaves an imprint on you later. And I kind of learned that during the pandemic of um, doing a career for 12 years and not dealing with a lot of bad stuff. And it catches up to you and you're forced to deal with it. So I don't know why people want that, want to see it. Um, other than I do understand that, you know, maybe if a situation happens and you can help or you can do something, everybody kind of wants to feel important and everybody wants to be involved in something meaningful. If you have the that skill set where, you know, other people would run the exact opposite direction, I think. Um, but at the same time, you know, the show must go on. Um, trust me. You do not want to be a part of that morbid situation. Because somebody's life is impacted forever. Maybe they die and move on. But also the lives of everybody in their life is impacted. Um, their families, maybe their husbands, fathers, spouses, any of that kind of stuff. And, you know, it leaves an imprint on them and changes their lives forever, forever as well. So, you know, next time you see something like that, I would say be grateful count your blessings, and maybe say a prayer for them that they're going to be okay and their families that they're going to be okay and move on because you're not doing anyone any good um, by rubbernecking. That's all I got for the day. Peace.